Very good evening to you with Sports Night. I'm Damien Best. An unbeaten century by Hamprit Kerr has helped India women into the World Cup Finals. Playing into their second semi against Australia women in Derby, Kerr smashed 171 out from 115 deliveries inclusive of 24s and 7 sixes as India women posted 281 for 4 from the 42 overs possible after a more than three-hour delay at the start of play due to rain. Here's a look at that innings. Oh, she goes big, does Raj. She goes down the ground and she brings up her first boundary. On the charge, does Raj go? And she plays this beautifully. She goes again, she goes big on this occasion. There's someone under it and it's taken. Over the head of Villani at uh, mid-off, it's four. Yes! Boulder! Kristen Beams. And that is smashed. And she's found that gap beautifully, placed it brilliantly through deep in wickets. 50 up for Harman Creek Paul. She's got a very important role to play in this semi-final. Yeah, there she goes. Oh, there she goes. The strike of Harman Preet Kaur. What a wonderful stroke maker she is. Oh, she's got that through again. That's going to be another four. Yeah, that's what she does. Takes it upon herself to do all the run making. Oh. Late adjustment, she'll get more runs here. And in fact, she'll get four. Goes big, fielder out there, it misses her. Goes over extra this time. Bags of power for Harman Rikor. Makes this into a full toss, it's four more. He's belted this. Goes leg side, and it's another six. Balder, slower delivery. Flicks it leg side for one, and it takes Harman Brikor to 150. That is a magnificent effort by Harman Brikor. Now then, that's six, and it might well be a no ball. Let's just watch the umpire. Goes big again. What a wonderful hit this is. Is that the biggest she's hit today? Goes big again. What a wonderful hit this is. Deeper! And Haman Preetkor will be coming back for the second, and so too will Veda Krishnamurti, and she makes it. Well, Australia women in reply put in a valiant effort but were bowled out for 245 in 40.1 overs. Alex Blackwell top scored with 90, while Elise Villani made 75. Deepti Sharma was the pick of the bowlers for India women, taking 3 for 59 from 7.1 overs. We also have the Aussies reply. Oh, that's a beauty. That is a beauty. That is special. Shot by Perry. A well needed boundary. But shots like that will certainly help. Remember. Oh, gone. She's taken a catch, reflex catch, and dream works for India on the ground continues. It's gone through. That's four. Good looking shot. That's four. It beats backward point. Well, that's a powerful shot. Yep, dispatch for four. Balani, gone! Ah. Edged and out! That's taken! A miss hit from Healy, coming off the inside half of the bat. 
So much time there and out. Ash Gardner goes for just one. Oh, now is she out? Is she out? Yes, she's out of a non striker's end. Down to mid wicket and taken. India to win the important days. Gone straight, fielder coming near it. Where the Krishna Murthy bounces over her. Making the final. Well, she's got uh, enough bat on this one to take it over. The fielder, so Australia continue. So, will it be Guy Quad? Get that final wicket. Another clean strike. What a distance. It's another one. Same direction. Maybe not the same length. Taken on the full. The fielder there. Was it stoppable? But that's going to be four runs. Four more to Blackwell on 89 now. And the final wicket has fallen. And it's Dipti Sharma who gets it. And India are through to the finals. Well, India will now play England in the finals at Lords this Sunday. Barbadian Jack Kirby plays seventh in the final of the boys' 50-meter backstroke at the Youth Commonwealth Games in the Bahamas earlier tonight. Kirby, who plays sixth in the 100-meter backstroke final last evening, was timed at 27.05 seconds. Kennard Campbell of New Zealand was the winner in 26.18. Earlier this morning in the heats, Kirby was fourth in heat two in 27.01. Meanwhile, in the girls' 50-meter backstroke, Daniel Titus failed to advance to her final, finishing fourth in Heat 3 in 31.09 seconds. Well, Barbados Under-15 National Football Team defeated St. Kitts and Nevis Under-15s at the Willie Astro Turf last night in an international friendly. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from that encounter. Barbados Under-15s in the yellow and blue kit applying some early pressure to the defense of St. Kitts and Nevis in the first minute. Thierry Gill in the attacking third. Left foot shot rattles the top of the goal bar and the rebound wasted up and over for goal kick. Just seconds later and the Belgian boys at it again. Cross from the right into the 18 yard box. Kyle Lewis left boot and back of the net to put Barbados in front. 1-0 in the second minute. Fast forward to the second half now and Barbados sticking to their game plan, launching an attack down the left this time. Skill on the ball, beautiful to see. Shakes the defender and the cross into the danger zone. Sets up Gill with the one touch strike. Barbados with the 2-0 lead. And to make matters worse for St. Kitts Nevis, Poor tackle inside the 18-yard box. Gifting a penalty in the 72nd minute. Andre Applewit stepping up. Left side, the best side. Barbados with the 3-0 victory over St. Kitts and Nevis. Coming up, a call for Kensington to catch up with the rest of the world through an indoor facility. Beaches Brown is always around. Ooh, you see that? Just only idiot going that house, yeah? You sure you don't want any more? I good. Can you hear something about school close tomorrow? You got that from? Tiffany just sent me a broadcast, something about how school close tomorrow. You sure that room? I heard that was a rumor. You know anything you could Google. But you don't need Google if you're already following JS on Instagram and Twitter. Look. I have the official tweet right here. The real doll weed has come from. This was the weirdo I was telling you about. Okay, you're just rude. Anywho, if you are looking for up to the minute information on school and government closures or important government notices, just follow us on Instagram and Twitter. At least there's no going on. Mm -hmm. You know what that means, right? No school traffic in the morning. Which means that we can still a little late. Yeah, how far we get in this movie? You know, I could not believe that the girl was the killer. She's a big man. You would not believe how crazy this movie is yet. I'm serious. When that girl come through with the axe and the hacksaw, it was like, this is madness. Beaches from is always around.
cricket is wheating. Every man, woman and child in Barbados understands that cricket belongs to all of us. Memories of the glorious game fill us with joy and build confidence in our people. Let us continue to embrace the grand game. Get involved in cricket however you can. Bring your children and come enjoy the game. Let us remember that cricket is wheating. The BCA's game of the day on Saturday, July 22nd, Sunday, July 23rd, is between ASA Field Pickwick and ICBL Empire at the Four Square Oval venue located in St. Philip. Come out and support the teams, and you could carry home one of the big giveaways. Remember, cricket is we ting. We're back. Well, long-standing board member Conde Riley believes it's time the mecca of cricket in the Caribbean, Kensington Oval, has its own indoor facilities. Well, speaking on this week's QFM's Midwicket Cricket Talk Show, Riley, one of the BCA's directors on Cricket West Indies board, noted that Kensington is the only modern cricket ground in the world without an indoor facility. Kensington Oval is like a house without a kitchen. It is the only major cricketing ground in the world, modern, that does not have indoor facility. The plans for that were um, done in 2005, but at the time of the World Cup, it wasn't thought to be a necessity, and it was shelved. But that precludes, not having an indoor facility precludes the Barber Cricket Association from doing two things. One, being able to take the development program into um, different times of the day, and is also constrained by the weather. And that would be one of the things I'd like the board to really consider in any um, plan to go forward. It would also help, I think, in the sports tourism um, thrust of the country, because in talking to many um, counties that have been here, they, they, they prefer to go to South Africa and Dubai because of that those same two constraints. And I believe that that would lead to uh, more attractive Ken's Noble. Well, BCA First Vice President Dayton Smith agreed with the idea of having an indoor facility for the development of local cricket, but he suggested the Wildy facility where the BCA has already invested more than a million dollars as opposed to Kensington Oval. I agree on one level with Connie, I disagree with him on a different, another level. Uh, I do think we need to look at, our, at an indoor facility. But I think Kensington is the wrong place for it. Um, the BCA has already spent in excess of a million dollars developing a facility at Wildy that was provided by the government uh, as they have provided facilities there for all sporting bodies. I think we should build an indoor facility up there which has the capacity to hold much more than we can hold at Kensington. And the reason that is important is because development of a cricketer does not only happen within the confines of the BCA programs, but it happens at the club level. And all of our clubs right now are constrained with practice times. I think if we build a, a, a big enough facility, and we had a plan drawn that for a facility that has 10 lanes, 10 pitches, and I think that gives us the opportunity to bring clubs up to that facility at night and to increase the number of practice hours they're putting in every week. I think inevitably that will raise the standard of our local cricket. Well, it's time to tell you now what's happening tomorrow, July 21st. The Sagari International Schools Cricket Tournament goes into the playoff stage with the semi-finals due to be played at the 3Ws Oval and Four Square from 11 a.m. That's Sports Night. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Damien Best. Do have a good night. CBC TV 8 in beautiful Barbados.